Mm-hmm. Right. Clicker is now not working. Hmm. We are working on a little technical glitch. It was working a minute ago. Sorry, y'all, we're having all the tech troubles today. You can click the arrow right here or use the arrows on the keyboard right there. It's great. Now it's working. Awesome. At this time, we'd like for you to share in the chat box any success stories that you may have experienced since last job club. We always love hearing from our audience. Success story could be you've upgraded or updated your LinkedIn or your resume. Perhaps you've had an interview. Uh, we're hearing from lots of clients that are getting second and third interviews. So we know you're getting close. Uh, but let us know in that chat box if you've had some good news in your <laughs> job search since we last met. We'll share some of those as they come in. We, we always want to encourage you to let us know when you have landed your next position. Uh, that's the highlight of our work, getting to hear from our job club attendees when they have landed their next position or when they get um, interviews. Any, up, any up notes in the box on success stories? All right, well, feel free to include those um, during today's presentation. We, at the end, we will share active job leads. Uh, we'll also be sending those out after Job Club today. We'll have some partner updates, and then we'll share what's going on next time um, at our Job Club meeting. Our mission of Job Club is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network, learn best practices for the job search. We know that if it's been a little while since you've job searched, things have changed, and we want you to be up to date uh, with the most effective techniques to job search and advance your career. We meet the second and fourth Tuesday of the month here in person at the Fayette Cooperative Extension Office in Lexington uh, or virtually. More information can be found at www.ukalumni.net forward slash job club like to introduce our team. It takes a team to pull off Job Club. I'm Caroline Francis, Director of UK Alumni Career Services. I'm joined by Diana Doggett, Extension Specialist, Special Projects. Amanda Shagney, Associate Director of Alumni Career Services. Nicole Waite, Employment Specialist with UK Steps Temporary Employment. Um, we also have Christy Kaufman with UK Alumni Association and Lindsay Cottle helping on our team today. Again, we are in a hybrid format. If you're local, we always encourage you to attend in person for that added networking benefit that can take place in person. Um, we also have the Zoom feature for those that are joining us from afar with the chat moderator available. And there's Facebook Live, which is then the view only format. So there's no chat box moderator. And also, if you're only joining by Facebook Live, you won't have access to the job lead newsletter that's emailed after Job Club. Um, our first timers, we encourage you to check out our free Job Club resource packet. Lots of wonderful articles and resources that will help you. Um, that can be accessed from the website. And we really also want to encourage you to, in, to join our LinkedIn group. It's the Central Kentucky Job Club Sharing Community. It's a free open group on LinkedIn. We get job leads that often close quickly, that close before our next job club meeting. And we encourage employers to post those job leads directly on our LinkedIn. Uh, there's quite a bit of engagement in that LinkedIn group. So please check out the LinkedIn group um, to stay up to date on last minute job postings or job leads that we receive. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. 
in-person employers, which we have one today, will have a spotlight at the end of Job Club to share about active job leads with their group. Um, if you're online as an employer, you can raise your hand at the end of the meeting at the appropriate time and we'll give you an opportunity to also share an active job lead. So do watch your email for people that are registered and you'll get that newsletter today with those job leads. Some attendees are conducting a confidential job search. So let's be respectful, respectful of privacy of other job seekers. Uh, again, check out our job search related articles um, in the bottom of the newsletter. Um, we send wonderful new articles in those newsletters as well as job leads. Lastly, our recordings and PowerPoint slides are available on the website at www.ukalumni.net forward slash job club. Incredible resources. I'd like to welcome our first timers. We always have a few first timers. We have a couple in our audience today. So welcome first timers. First timers will receive a follow-up survey later today for your feedback and that will get you also in our system. Or you can scan the QR code um, that's on the screen and that'll also quickly get you in the system for our reminders and that newsletter. Any success stories at this point that have come through? Okay, we are so thrilled to have our guest speaker today, an incredible resource to the Central Kentucky Job Club community. Amanda Shagney is our speaker today on LinkedIn. She is the Associate Director of Alumni Career Services and I am so fortunate to have her as my colleague. She brings over 11 years of experience in career counseling. She served in adjunct faculty roles at UK as well as career counseling roles. She has the highest credentials in the field of career counseling, some of which include the certified career counselor credential, certified clinical supervisor of career counseling, certified career counselor, transition coach. She's also Gallup Strength Certified, Myers-Briggs Practitioner, and Strong Interest Inventory Certified Practitioner. In December of 2020, she published in the National Career Development Association Journal, which is a big kudo in our field. She's also served as the past director of the Kentucky Career Development Association. She's also previously been a contributing columnist to the Lexington Herald Leader um, business column. You may have remembered reading some of her columns. She's earned a certificate in business administration, master's degree in counseling psychology, and a BA in psychology, all from the University of Kentucky. And she is a proud member, a life member of the UK Alumni Association. Please help me in welcoming Amanda Shagney as our speaker today. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, today, our topic is going to be LinkedIn. I'm excited to share some content with you all. Um, skip over this one. So I'm curious about your LinkedIn experience before we get started here in the chat box. Let us know a little bit about your exposure to LinkedIn. And for those in the room curious about yours too, are you new to LinkedIn? Or are you just setting up your profile today? That's all right. We're gonna talk about all those profile details. Or have you had a profile for a while? Maybe it's less active. Maybe you haven't logged in in a while and it needs some updating. Or would you consider yourself a LinkedIn pro? I log in regularly, I'm active um, in, in my network online. Curious what you all think for that. So while we're waiting on the online audience to tag in, what about those in person? Do you have experience with LinkedIn? Inactive, it's been hanging out. You have an account, but it's been hanging out. I'd say that's probably the most common. What about you in the back over here? Same, same. What about you? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So the employer in the room, if you can't hear that for the online group, um, their HR team is active on LinkedIn and they think they have a company page that's active. Um, so you'll see that it's a great opportunity to follow companies and we'll get into that. What about for the online group? What are you seeing on there? Uh, Christy and Lindsay, what do you see? 
and it looks like we have a little bit of everything, all in regularly, then every now and then, and new. Okay. All right. That's a good spread. So we'll try to touch base on all of those. Um, know that for today, some of that content for those that are, I would say, super users of, of LinkedIn, some of this content may be a little bit basic, but we can always learn and improve our profile as we go. And you're most welcome to uh, set up your computer so you can edit your profile while we're talking too. You're most welcome to use this time actively to, to increase your network on your profile. Everyone's profile is going to look a little bit different after today's session, and that's good and healthy. We want our profile to showcase our uniqueness factors as a candidate. And so if you find, if you look me up on LinkedIn, which you're most welcome to connect with us in the facilities group or the facilitation team on LinkedIn, um, our profiles will, will look different. And that's, it's supposed to, it's really supposed to. So some of you who are new to LinkedIn may ask, like, do I really need to do this? Is, what, what is LinkedIn and what, why is it important? And so LinkedIn is an online network for business professional students designed specifically for professional network. And a lot of super users may describe this casually as Facebook with a briefcase. Um, it's not atypical for clients to ask me, well, how do you know if I can be friends with someone on LinkedIn or not? Like, how do you know what that threshold is? And, and the truth is, I would say that it's even more distant than some of the other social media factors. If you're a TikToker um, or if you're using Instagram or Insta, um, as some folks will call it, you may feel like you need to know that person pretty well to follow them. For LinkedIn, it's appropriate if you meet someone once at a networking event to add them to your professional network. And so I would say to, to those clients and, and to you in the audience, if someone is at the professional acquaintance level, it's appropriate to add them on LinkedIn. It's also acceptable on LinkedIn to reach out to strangers that you want to network with. And we'll talk about that strategy as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about navigating LinkedIn. And I'm actually gonna to toggle over to my account so that we can navigate some of the main features together, especially for those that are new to the software. Okay, all right, I think that's coming through over on your end. Whenever you first log into LinkedIn, and if you haven't set up your account, please do so while we're talking. It's easy to set up. You just need to set up your email password and start importing some of your experience. And we can talk about that when we get to that section. But whenever you're on this first navigation page, we'll kind of just talk about what each of these tabs do and the benefits for each one, just briefly. On the first page, you'll see a feed, and this is similar to other social media forms where it's showing you news. And so it might be that my colleague, Mandy, who's later, uh, she's going to be presenting to the job club group uh, maybe next month, I think, um, in the summer schedule. Um, she shared an, an article on leading an organization and, and how empathy is important. So it's a good place to share articles, to share news about jobs. If you're following companies in here or if you're part of groups on here, which we'll talk about briefly in a moment, you're going to see that type of content inside of your news feed. And I'd say most super users, people who are active in LinkedIn several times a week, not necessarily every day, spend a great deal of their time just scouting what's on their feed so that they are informed on what their network is doing. Okay, so we want to know when our colleagues um, take on um, new jobs or if we see someone from our um, from our old math class or chemistry class. It's great to keep up with our colleagues, our high school buddies, our college buddies in that way to see what they're into. Okay, so that's the news feed. And you'll see you can refresh that every so often. I logged in about 30 minutes ago. So there's some new news in my feed, even in the last 30 minutes. Okay, up here in the My Network, you'll see this is where we're going to add new connections. And you can keep track of your number of connections, although the number of connections is really insignificant. After 500, LinkedIn will say 500 plus. Um, but the true power of LinkedIn is second and third degree connections. So someone that you know knows someone at an organization that you want to work at. And so you can use those, um, those networks. And a lot of the research tells us that networking in that way is very successful for the job search. We can do that um, through the LinkedIn software and messaging. So you'll see here it's recognized folks that I may know from the University of Kentucky because I've been really specific in my profile that I work at UK and that I'm a UK alum. So if you add the, that type of content to your profile, it'll recommend folks for you as well. Okay, before I keep moving forward, I'm gonna ask, are there any questions in the chat that I can address? Or are we okay over there? I'm happy to take some. Yes, we have one question. Sure. Is Job Club an organization? 
Job Club is a program that's put on by three different groups, the Alumni Association, Fett County Extension, and UK HR Steps Temporary Employment. Our facilitation team works hard to build a schedule twice a month, and it's a specific program that's offered to job seekers free and open to the, the public. Thank you. Good question. All right. We'll check back in for questions. Feel free to put those into the chat, um, or if folks in person have a question, give us a wave and we'll get a microphone so the online audience can hear you too. Okay, so we talked about the My Network. Next up, we're going to talk briefly about the Jobs tab. LinkedIn has a fantastic job board, and I would say most recruiters that, that we've worked with, in, at least in alumni career services, will often have um, jobs posted onto LinkedIn in addition to Indeed and their job board. It's, it's pretty standard for HR professionals to post on here. And so you can set up a recent job search. So for mine, I would post like career services or career management or professional development, and it'll email you jobs that are relevant to you. Overall, I would say the jobs that, um, that I'm sitting on there are very relevant. I do a lot of job searching with clients. And so sometimes it'll email me um, from search parameters that I've searched with a client. Um, and I think that, that that uniqueness of those emails is really helpful. It's really helpful as a job seeker. Messaging, I'm not going to click into that, but that's your one-on-one -on message, one -on -one messaging for your network. If you are connected to someone, you can message them for free on LinkedIn. If you're part of the same group, you can message with them um, for free. A lot of clients will say, oh, you know, I, should I upgrade to premium so I can message second and third degree contacts? Maybe, um, but by and far, I would recommend sticking to the free version for most job seekers. Depending on the nature of your job search, it might make sense to upgrade to premium, um, but that's something I'd recommend you chat with your career advisor or career coach about, um, and Caroline and I are happy to support you in that, in that strategy. Notification Center is very similar to other, um, to other job club groups, or, or sorry, not to other job club groups, I just saw that and thought of that, to other social media forms. It'll say if someone liked a comment that you made on their post, if someone in your network got a new job, or if they posted an article, who viewed your profile, which is really interesting. If you're applying to different types of jobs, and you notice someone at that organization looked at your profile, that's probably the HR professional looking at your profile. And research tells us um, that most HR managers, nine out of 10 or so in the data, are using LinkedIn as a first round parameter, like a research uh, for our candidates. So we wanna put that good professional content out there. And then underneath this one, you can see your profile and then address settings and privacy, which are good to review on those. Unlike other social media forms, we wanna have LinkedIn pretty public. Um, our other social media forms, we wanna have pretty locked down. Almost there, sorry, y'all. Duplicate slideshow. All right, there we go. So let's talk a little bit about the profile. And as we're going through this content, be evaluating your profile as we go along. And if there's something that you can do to tinker or to level up that, level, that part of your profile, please do that now. Let's talk about the LinkedIn photo. Some folks are hesitant to put a photo on there. And sometimes clients will ask me, is it a good idea to put a photo on there? Maybe they're a little worried about age discrimination, um, looking very experienced or not very experienced. That can go both ways. That's all right. Um, but by and far, the data tells us that HR managers are more likely to call us if they see a photo and if they see a LinkedIn. So adding a professional looking photo can make you seven times more likely to be found in searches according to LinkedIn data. And so we can't deny that that data it's pretty powerful. We really do need to have a photo. Now, some folks will ask like, oh, I don't really have the money right now on my job search to, to splurge on a professional photographer to take photos of me. That's not necessary. Whenever we say professional photo, we mean you look professional, not necessarily that a professional takes it. And so for, for those in the room, we're really looking for a photo that includes your shoulders and up, that you're dressed in business appropriate attire, a nice sweater or a jacket or a blazer, and that there's good light on your face, your hair is out of your face, and that you look very business appropriate. Okay, so a couple of tips here um, on the screen with genuine expression, welcoming smile, of course, always help to, to make your profile more attractive in that way. So curious in the chat box, who out there needs to update their LinkedIn profile? This might be you if there's no profile picture up there, or if the profile picture is a little dated, it's a couple of years old, but maybe it's time to do that. If that's you, add that to your to-do list now. Okay, 
Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about the profile headline in the about section. These are right underneath your, your name. And so you can see on mine as an example here, higher ed and adult career services corporate trainer, adjunct course instructor. That content defaults to what your current job is. And so if you looked at your profile right now, and please do, um, my gut says that if you haven't edited it, it's the default for what your current or most recent job was or is. I certainly think that customizing that is a really good strategy because HR professionals who are using uh, advanced versions of LinkedIn like Sales Navigator or they may be using the advanced features, um, all of this content is searchable for them, just like a Google form. They can search by keywords. And so anytime that we can show relevant content for them, we want to do that. We want to be easily found. So we do recommend at this time, go ahead and update um, to stand out with a very keyword rich headline that shows how you want to be known on LinkedIn, very bird's eye view. And so if you're a human resources professional, if you're an administrative expert, don't be modest here. If you have many years of expertise in an area, you're an expert, you're a professional in that area. What do people come to you for, for your help? That means you're an expert in those areas. So think critically, bird's eye view, about how you wanna be known and search, um, found via like a search engine. Further down on your profile, right below the screenshot that I have here is a summary section. It's called About Me. And you can use that to really expand on your expertise and skills. It's not uncommon for clients of mine to use that um, area to really address, tell me about yourself, similar content that we would hear in an interview. And so it's our headline, but much more in detail. It's relevant skill areas that we have. Um, it might be specific um, certifications. You heard Caroline mention a couple of certifications that I have. Those, those are in my about me. Things that I want to be known about in my area of expertise, that's going to be on my about me or my summary page. Similar to that profile headline, HR professionals can do keyword searches in Sales Navigator, their version of LinkedIn, for that content. And so the more specific and targeted we are with that content, the more likely we are to be found by those professionals. So, Take a moment, look at your headline, um, your profile headline in your about section. And if this needs some updating, um, go ahead and add that to your to-do list or continue to work on that in session. I see our chat moderators over here giving me a wave. I think we've got a question from the chat. A question from the chat is, is there any data or information on how important it is to include pronouns under your name? Mm, that's becoming more and more common. I wouldn't say it's um, standard practice in all industries to include your pronouns, but certainly in human resources and higher education industries, I've seen that to be more and more standard. Uh, it is a very inc gender inclusive and, and in general diversity inclusive practice that we recommend to, to clients. It, it ultimately depends on your comfort level with sharing those. Sharing your pronouns um, may be a small thing for us, but for folks um, who are looking for inclusivity in lots of ways, that means a great deal to them. And that's easy to add. You just click that little pencil icon on the top right, and you can add uh, your personal pronouns. And you'll see there's a little, I'm not sure if it'll follow my mouse, but a little audio thing. If you have a name that's hard to spell or hard to say in the pronunciation, you can record yourself pronouncing your name. And I highly recommend that too. Another question. Sure. What if you don't have any certifications or you haven't completed a degree yet? That's okay. That's okay. It's always a work in progress. And I hear that often, even for folks who are more experienced and looking for a career change, they may not have as many relevant or directly relevant um, credentials. That's okay. It's okay to put in there that you're a current student or what you're working on as well. It's okay to put in progress. And there's lots of opportunities for us to seek out free community resources for that. So if you join the local public library, a great deal of them will give you free access to LinkedIn Learning, which has a great deal of certification programs often for free on those. Coursera or edX are also great resources for taking some online classes. So if you're looking to bridge into a new area or looking for some relevant things that you could put into your resume or your LinkedIn profile, definitely check those out. So Public Library um, has great resources, LinkedIn Learning, Coursera, and edX. Any others that you would add to that, Caroline? I'm looking for um, colleague feedback. Okay, all right, very good. Any other questions in the chat I can catch up on? Okay, all right, very good. So if you need to work on your profile headline and about section, um, do jot that down. We're gonna continue on to the professional experience section next.
Okay. In our professional experience section, um, this is going to give us a little bit more content for your work experience. And it's not uncommon for folks to include descriptions just like on their resume, even to copy and paste those from their resume into the professional experience section. Okay. Um, depending on whose profile you're looking at, sometimes it's just a battery of work experience with uh, titles and companies. Make sure you're linking specifically to the company page when you can. Not all companies have pages, so that makes it a little harder to navigate. But whenever you link it to the specific company, it does import their logo on the left, which looks really nice and professional. Um, what else? The experience section will allow you to tag companies. We talked about that. This helps you, again, be findable because employers can uh, start to seek out specific keywords from those descriptions. And then including your title. So we want to be really careful with those job titles. Some organizations are really creative with their titles, and some titles are, are much more technical. And I'm thinking of UK as an example. I'm looking at my colleague in HR in the back here. Your, your title at UK might be Administrative Officer 3. I'm seeing Nicole giving me some nods back there. Um, and so there's no, no need necessarily to include that specific of a technical title. It could be Administrative Officer um, and so describing it in the most simple way possible that most people would understand is the best way to go in that scenario. Um, what else? Highlighting your relevant experience in uh, conversational formatting and brief manageable bullets. That's in the job description. A lot of folks and, and my clients will just copy and paste over from their resume so that they're providing really consistent content on all platforms that they're branding themselves. I think that's a best practice. That's really good. A newer feature on LinkedIn for those that have taken a career break is that you can add in a career break in between different job entries. And I think this is a really modern update that LinkedIn's done in the last year, maybe. Um, and so we have clients and alumni career services who have taken breaks from work to raise a family or to care for an ailing parent. No one in the, in the job market, no HR professional is going to ding you for that. That's great. We just need to be upfront about what we were doing in that time. And so LinkedIn has a really great feature in there that you can add an employment break and you can describe what you are doing. And, and if you were raising a family or, or caring um, for an ailing family member, you don't have to get into a whole lot of detail on that. Um, but thinking about some of those transferable skills and how they may be relevant to what you want to do can be really helpful too. Okay. All right, happy to answer any questions about experience over there um, as they come into the chat. Looks like we're caught up right now. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the education section. Okay, education section, certainly a required section on your LinkedIn and on your resume. It's important that you have those. Highest degree standing at the top, most recent back in time. And so if you have a VA, um, you would list that before any, um, or if you have a master's degree, you would list a master's degree before a BA. Um, ultimately, no need to list a high school degree unless that's your highest degree standing. That's okay, too. Include the name of school, college, institution, and the location on there. A lot of schools don't have um, pages, especially if you're um, going for a specific credentialing program. A lot of universities do, so try to connect those on those company pages when you can. Start and end dates if they're recent. If it's more than five years out, you do not have to include those dates. And a lot of folks um, who are more experienced may be wary of doing that because of age discrimination factors. We respect that very much. Employers by and far want to know how many years of relevant experience you have over when you graduated, right? We're thinking about what's relevant for them. Employers are reading this content with what's in it for us in mind. That's their job. And, and what's most relevant to them is how many years of relevant experience you have rather than when you graduated. So be mindful of that too. It's also appropriate to include some activities, societies, professional associations, things like that, that you did in the education section, but also in the volunteer section. Um, especially for those that don't have as much robust work experience, that's an opportunity for you to provide some, some relevant content as well. Working our way down the profile page, you'll see there's a section called recommendations and skills. Okay, These are great sections that can highlight your competency in specific areas. And so we do recommend to our clients to go ahead and add in there a dozen or so skills. Um, that you would like for folks to endorse you on. It, these are things that people come to you for support on. And so if we were looking at, at mine on here, well, career counseling and career development and job search strategies uh, certainly seem relevant to what I'm doing with my clients, right? 
Um, and so adding these very early on in my career helps to build credibility whenever our client's looking for someone in support in the job search. Well, they're going to want someone with those relevant skill sets. And, and I have folks who say, I do. So think about what are relevant skill sets for your area. And so let's do a chat box engagement question here. Um, in the chat box, what do you think are some relevant skill sets that you might add to your profile? We're going to drop those down, but also for accountability. Let's put them in the chat. Um, just a couple on there. What are skill sets that you think are high in demand for your relative skill and also um, that you're going to add to your profile on there? Now, I'll give you some tips as we're going. And I'm going to ask for your alls too in person. So you're not off the hook for that. Um, is if you're nervous about getting endorsements for your profile, then after you add the skill sets, go to your connections pages and endorse them for their skill sets. Okay. So if you have a former coworker on there and you're like, oh, this former coworker, she built the best PowerPoint slides. I'm going to endorse her for PowerPoint over there. She's really good at that. And we have a colleague that I'm thinking of who's just stellar and she does a lot of our PowerPoint building. Um, and then that would LinkedIn would send that person a notification on their page up on the top right. And it would say, Amanda notif or, Amanda endorsed you for PowerPoint skills. Would you like to endorse her for a skill set? And so there's a level of reciprocity that happens, a little bit of peer pressure, societal pressure on there. That's good and healthy too. So the more you endorse others, the more likely they are to endorse you too. So as those are coming in on the chat, I'm going to ask some of the online or the in-person audience here too. What are some relevant skill sets that you might add to your LinkedIn profile after learning a little more about it today? Sure, please, please do share. Well, as a recruiting coordinator, um, networking. Is yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. Um, and our department has recently got social media platforms for mm -hmm. recruiting specifically. So um, social media management and graphic design creation for content. Lovely. Great skill sets to have. Thank you for sharing. Uh, project management. Mm -hmm. High in demand. Very good. Uh, Lovely. Lovely. And then would you like to share a couple? No, no, it's okay. You can pass. What about from that online audience? What skill sets are really in demand in the online group? We have a couple of responses, interpersonal mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. conflict resolution, management, supervisory. That's good. Critical thinking skills. Love it. And attention to very, very good. And so we want to think about our combination of skills as our uniqueness factor in a lot of ways. And so for um, project management comes to mind because it's one that I see often on um, job descriptions as a, a skill in need. Uh, what can we partner project management with that makes us even more unique for us as a candidate? So it might be those interpersonal skills to be able to run a project, but also to talk to people about that project, right? And so be thinking about that unique combination and how you'll tell your story, both in an interview setting, on your resume, and in the LinkedIn platform. We want to be really consistent with our message about what we offer as a candidate in all of those platforms. Let's talk a little bit about recommendations. These are a little bit more robust than the skill set endorsements, but they meet the same need. There are paragraph recommendations from our former colleagues or customers or consumers um, that share a little bit about working with us. And you can see an example on there, a former colleague of mine, Sandy, um, from my page. These are not meant to be a burden. It's meant to be just a couple of quick lines. You know, we're not asking for a letter of recommendation, like a full-on letter. It's just a couple of quick lines, maybe two or three question, um, sentences in that way about our background. If you do a recommendation for your former colleagues, write inside the message in that notification that says, would you like to write one for your other person? Well, yeah, there's a level of reciprocity that'll happen naturally in those ways. And it's a good idea to have a couple of recommendations on there. Be thinking about who could best speak to your specific skill sets, because the more specific those recommendations and those skill sets are to what you're going for, the more competitive you'll be. Any questions? Yeah. Question is, when you make a recommendation or endorse a skill, does that go on your feed for others to see? It does. It does. Under You'll see it on the screen grab here. Next to receive, there's another toggle button there that says given. And so you can see um, recommendations that you've given to other people. And so they'll see that you're generous in that way too. It is public. Now, whenever you, let's say hypothetically, you get a recommendation and you're like, 
Uh, I mean, it's okay, but it's not, it's not really showcasing the skill set that I want to showcase right now. You can also hide those recommendations from um, your page, even temporarily while you're in a job search for a different area. And it does not notify the person who, who gave the recommendation. So it won't say, oh, Christy wrote your recommendation, but I, I'm going to let her know that, um, that you've hidden that from your profile this month. It, the system is not going to do that to you. Other questions in the chat? Excellent. Okay, let's talk about adding visual elements. And, and this is true for lots of uh, profile, um, different platforms that will showcase our brand. And of course, in the interview setting with how we show up in our attire and how we speak, um, but also in our resume and our LinkedIn. Adding visual elements to your profile um, is a really easy way to engage the audience to make your profile look more robust. And so you can do this through the featured section. Um, you can highlight articles that you've read or any press that you've received or a special project that you worked on. And I'm thinking of a couple of examples. This is Caroline's profile here on the screen. Um, and she does a great deal of presentations for our community. She did a presentation recently for AARP. She does podcasts. And so you can see on here that she's linked on the left there, um, a podcast that she did for the Alumni Association. So it helps them to promote the podcast, um, but also great branding for her to include that as a visual element front and center right on her profile there. So be strategic about what you might include there. This may or may not be appropriate depending on um, what you're going for, and that's okay too. Be thinking about how you can add visual elements, even if it's not through a featured section. You can also add media underneath a specific job entry too. And so if there's a featured section at the very top, which is uh, under the about section, but underneath individual job um, descriptions, you can also add media. And so if there's a project or a PowerPoint or something that you wanna add in, that's very relevant to that specific job, you can certainly feature that. Um, in there too. Think of other ways that might be appropriate too. I think that covers that one. Okay, age proofing your profile. This is something oftentimes my experienced clients or very experienced clients are concerned about is age discrimination or my clients who have, or maybe just entry level, maybe they're um, just graduating from university and they don't have a whole lot of experience to showcase is thinking about how we can age proof those profiles. And so when we're working on our resume and our LinkedIn, we, we don't wanna age ourselves, same, same concept with that. Um, so if we received a degree more than five years ago, we're typically not gonna list those degree details. And if you have work experience from over 10 years ago, that's less relevant to the goal that we're, the job that we're going for, it may not be appropriate to include that on LinkedIn. We're really focusing on what's recent and most relevant, relevant over recent too, that's okay. For older, older job titles, um, update them with a job title that's more um, commonly referred to now. And so um, the word domestic engineer comes to mind. I've seen that on a few profiles from our experienced folks. And, and it's okay to say, you know, that you were career break, raising a family. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. All right. Any questions from the chat? You doing okay? Excellent. Keep me on track. Okay. Um, I hope you all know who this picture is in the chat box or in, in person. Do you know who this is in the photo? It's Waldo. Okay. All right. I worry that some of the younger generations won't know who Waldo is or where he's at, although he's a hard guy to find. Um, but I'm going to keep Waldo alive because I'm going to keep him in this presentation. Um, you want to be easily found. You do not want to be a Waldo when it comes to LinkedIn. You want your profile to be easily found front and center. And so most recruiters, as a best practice, are Googling your name. If you're on a phone interview with a recruiter, chances are they are right on that computer Googling your name to see what they can find. And a lot of candidates are like, oh, gosh, what are they looking for? Are they looking for bad stuff? Like, what are they looking for? Well, in general, they're looking for, for good content. LinkedIn has great search power in Google. And so it's likely to be one of the top hits that come up from there. But at the same time, HR recruiters are, are looking to see if you're a good fit for the values and mission of their organization. And so if you're posting stuff online that's very politically polarizing or very opinionated in that way or very negative, or if you um, have done any online bullying, well, then, then that's certainly something that they're going to consider to evaluate. And, and that's a point of contention oftentimes for, for clients is that they think social media should be very private. Social media is not private and your online presence is critically important and it will follow you for the rest of your career. Okay, A little more specific on ways that you can avoid being Waldo on LinkedIn. 
are to customize your profile URL. And by URL, I mean your website. So if you're looking at your profile right now, look at the web address on the very top. And if there's a combination of letters and numbers on there, you're not customized yet. So on your profile page on the top right, click customize URL and make it some combination of your name. So linkedin.com forward slash Amanda Shagney. So it's easy for employers to find. Then you can put that link onto all of the platforms where you would want people to see professional content, like your resume, your email signature, your business card. Um, maybe you're using online network. I have my phone up here. If you're using networking apps like Hi Hello or the LinkedIn app, um, it's good to have those handy. Adding your industry and zip code to your profile makes it easier for recruiters who are using the Sales Navigator version to find you. Some folks are hesitant to put their zip code out there because it's online, but your zip code's already online out there. That's okay. Put your zip code on there. Do not include your mailing address. And I'll often see clients include in their featured section a copy of their resume. That's okay. But for that version, take off your cell phone and your mailing address if you have that listed on there. Okay. So email, LinkedIn are, are perfectly fine to, to put out there pretty public. Underneath your profile settings under job seeking preferences. And so when you're online, this is the part where there's an icon with your image on it. Select that down and it'll say um, settings and privacy. On the left, you'll see job seeking preferences. Read those carefully. Many in the room and online are conducting a confidential job search, and, and we respect that very much. I see a lot of incognito job seekers out there who are maybe in a passive job search, seeing if the grass is greener, and that's what we have to do as candidates. That's fine. But if you're wary of having HR professionals or others know that you're on the job search, it's best to put your job seeking preferences under a more conservative option. If you're okay with HR professionals who have the sales navigator version, knowing that you're open to opportunities, select the open to opportunities option. And on LinkedIn, for those who are very actively job seeking, and maybe if you're unemployed and, and truly, truly actively job seeking, I could start next week kind of job seeking, you'll see on profile pictures, um, willing to start or looking to hire, or you'll see that on a recruiter's page. And so you'll see some customization that can happen even with your profile picture. And that's absolutely fine. Certainly makes you more discoverable there and less like the Waldo. Okay. More broadly on job search tips. Anything on profile before? I see we do have a question. Y'all go ahead. The question is, what are some tips to build your network, excluding the recommended contacts? Excluding the recommended contacts, yeah. Um, including, I would do a search for alumni of your university or your high school, starting with the network that's closest to you. I would join groups, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And I would follow companies and look to connect with HR professionals or people who are doing similar work at other organizations. Okay. Any other questions in the chat? It's good. It's good. Thank you. Keep them coming. All right. So I'm curious in the chat box and online you, or in person, you can give me a nod or a shake here. Um, has anyone used the job board online for LinkedIn and have you had some success with it? One person in person nodding, one person in person shaking their head like no. That job board is, is very robust and very good. And one of the reasons that I recommend it as a job search essential for my job seekers that I'm coaching is because it allows us to easily see the company information. We can see good press that the company's putting out on their page, but also it helps us to see who in our network may work there, has worked there before, or may be able to facilitate an introduction to someone who works there. And that power of networking is something that LinkedIn gives us and social media gives us that rarely other platforms are able to do. Okay. Um, let's see, other LinkedIn job search tips. Um, when you sign, a, sign into the job board there, save your search email for alerts. And so if you save specific keywords, you can set it up to email you jobs that are relevant to that every week or every day. And those notification emails while you're actively job searching are incredibly helpful. So if you're on the job search, definitely jot that down as an action item. You can save jobs that you're interested in to come back to them later. And that's um, a strategy that I often recommend to job search clients is we'll spend a lot of time researching jobs and applying for jobs, researching jobs and applying to jobs. Maybe a more effective strategy to consider is I'm gonna spend 30 minutes researching and flagging jobs of interest. 
And after that 30 minutes, I'm going to prioritize two of them to apply to. And tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to revisit the ones that are flagged and see if there's other jobs that have been posted in the, in the last day or two. I'm going to spend a pocket of time researching, and then I'm going to spend a pocket of time um, actively applying. And, and for those that are job seekers in the room, this won't be a surprise to you. Getting a job is a job. It takes some time investment, right? And so the more we can implement strategy that's specific to what your needs are, the more effective you're going to be in the long run for that. Let's see. More modern companies uh, that are using LinkedIn will allow you to use your profile to apply rather than uploading a resume or a cover letter. Um, that's becoming more and more common. So that's something to be aware of. Don't let that surprise you. That's why it's important that we have very robust profile and that it's very consistent with other platforms like on our resume. Some job postings will include the name of who posted it. And it's certainly appropriate to private message that person to connect with them and to ask any questions about the postings. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay, moving on to, to your network. In the chat box um, and in person, you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or like, uh, I don't know, uh, in the middle. What's your comfort level with reaching out to a stranger, to someone that you have no, no knowledge of on LinkedIn and introducing yourself? So comfort level with introducing yourself on a stranger, like, oh, oh, I'd rather not. Oh, if I had to, I could do it. Or like, heck yeah, sure, I'll message them. Curious in the chat box what we get from there too. Any like comfort level, high, medium, low, or it's harder to do the thumbs thing. It's kind of a split bag in the room. What are y'all seeing on the chat box? Um, we do have a question sure. from the job seeking slide. Sure. How is easy to apply to be by employers? Well, they're, they're the ones that set it up. So if the employer set it up that way, they're probably really actively seeking for those. Um, and I, I'd say that's good. It's always a good idea to apply on LinkedIn and their um, company page, if you can. I think that, that that investment in applying in both locations, ultimately you're likely to have to apply on their job board on their website anyways. Um, but yeah, there's no, no bad in that. And um, we have a range of comfort levels on their chat. Okay. All right. That's, that's pretty true of the clients that we work with too. And there was a good split in here too. That's all right. Um, the power of LinkedIn helps us understand second and third degree connections. Again, second degree connections means I know someone who can facilitate an introduction. Third degree connection, a little further removed. I know someone who knows someone who can facilitate an introduction. Those are a little harder. Start with your second degree connections. And so today we're really building our first degree connection list. Add people that you know on LinkedIn. And then the folks that they know are second degree connections can provide us with a great deal of support in the job search. We know that hiring managers, if they're told like, hey, I know of someone who's looking for a job in this area, we're much more likely to get an interview whenever we have that warm handoff. And so on LinkedIn, it is absolutely fine to reach out to someone that we don't know, even if they're not at the professional acquaintance level, to customize the invitation to add a note and to say, hi, I am a job seeker in the Lexington area. Uh, I'm looking for jobs in XYZ industry. And I noticed that you're working at XYZ company. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn um, and maybe catch coffee sometime. That's absolutely fine and appropriate for LinkedIn. And, and I get these kind of connection notices all the time. I'm happy to do that. In general, if a UK alum uh, connects with me, even if they don't add a note, I'll add them in there. That's absolutely fine. Okay, interestingly, research on the job search tells us that job seekers are more likely to connect or to land a job from a second or third degree connection over a first degree connection. And that's why career coaches and all the literature says network, network, network is essential for the job search. But it's crazy to think, you think our family, the people who are closest to us, our church community, our colleagues, our previous coworkers, first degree connections, would be the most valuable contributors for social capital for our job search. And they are, but indirectly, they help us facilitate introductions to the hiring manager. And that's critically important in the job search. Okay, any questions in the chat? Yep, I see y'all looking over here. Good signal, thank you. <laughs> this question is, someone's trying to add it for several positions that are a lower grade level than what they're currently working mm -hmm. They haven't received an interview because they see that the person is a manager and wonder why the person wants to take a lesser position. So the question is, how can I convince the hiring officials 
that I know that there will be a pay cut, but I want to transition into another position because I'm burnt out. Absolutely. And so this is something we see very often with our clients and alumni career services who have a great deal of experience or who are looking to retire, take a step back, maybe even part-time work is really common right now. Um, or for folks who are looking to do an industry or a job function change, a big change in their career. And so their documents, their branding statements on LinkedIn and resume and, and LinkedIn are, I have this many years of leadership experience, progression in this specific industry. And for others who are listening to say, what's in it for me? They may hear that as, oh, this person's overqualified. We may not be able to afford their talent, or I don't know if I want to deal with another cook in the kitchen, right? And so that's why it's important for us to really consider that branding statement at the, in the about me and our cover letters at the top of our resumes and our interview strategy that we're prepared to tell the story of why we're looking for a change. Okay. The burden of responsibility is always on the candidate to tell their story and to share what's recent, relevant, and appropriate for the job search. We're not always on target with that. That's why Caroline and I are here to support in that way. Um, but it does sound like that person um, might benefit from some retirement coaching. Caroline has a credential specifically in retirement uh, coaching and, and meets with a great deal of working retirees who are looking for what we would call an encore career or encore years in that later season of life. A great deal of contribute con con you can contribute um, because you have a wealth of experience in different areas. Don't give up. Um, so we're here to support in that too. Okay. Other questions in the chat? Excellent. Thank you all so much. All right, let's talk a little bit about pages versus groups. And so if you have LinkedIn up and you're, and you're playing around on there, let's look for a company page. We're going to follow pages to learn. And so type in the name of a company on there. You'll see I have a screen grab here from University of Kentucky Alumni Association. Shameless plug. That's where we were. We love the Alumni Association team. And so we can follow company pages to learn more about a product, a company's product, services, their latest news, their employees, job postings, um, but in general, good press. And you can see how you're connected to each company on there very easily. You can see if you have a first or a second degree connection, very easy from a company page. You can see stats on how many employees who work there are online. So you can see there's um, Sally and seven other connections work there, 17 employees who identify with the Alumni Association. And then you can follow um, those companies if you're interested to continue to get updates in your feed, that homepage on them. So we follow pages to learn. We follow pages to learn. The difference between that and groups, and sometimes these are a bit confusing, is groups help us interact and network with a specific population. And so we join groups that are relevant to our professional interests. This might be alumni groups, as an example, industry-specific groups, geographic location groups, um, or others. And you use groups to make connections, to network and find out about job opportunities, to establish those connections. Um, and to keep your eye on trending very specific industry standards and best practices. And so on there, you might do a search just as a little test as a sample is to do a, um, to do a search for a professional association that's relevant to your area. So if you're a marketing expert, you might do a search on there for the American Marketing Association, AMA, and join that group for networking. It's most likely a group and not a page. Okay. Sometimes organizations will have both. University of Kentucky, of course, has both. The page to follow news about UK, research that's happening, what faculty are doing, um, what jobs are posted through HR. But groups like the Alumni Association Network um, or Wildcat Network help us understand and connect with other alumni in that group. Okay, So groups for interaction, following pages to learn about good news. Any questions on that one? Very good. All right, next up, we're going to talk about keeping your profile up to date and complete. Probably one of the most common questions I get after like, oh, do I have to do this? Yes, as a job seeker, definitely. It's a, it's a good, every professional should have a LinkedIn profile is how many times a week do I have to do it? Like, what's the bare minimum that I could do it and it would still be acceptable to like log in and like click around a little bit? Well, I would say best practice if you're in an active job search is a couple of times a week, at least once a week. I would say two or three, four, five times a week. 
And if you're maintaining your network or you're more in the passive job search, a couple of times a month, at least. You wanna know about news for whenever your previous colleagues uh, leave their jobs or if you wanna send them a congratulations note, LinkedIn makes that so easy. It'll say, uh, this person, Diana got a new job, and then there's a button, it'll say, say congrats, and then boom, it even auto-populate the note for you and you can customize it. It's just a great way to, to keep your connections um, warm in your network. So every time you update your, your resume, you need to update your LinkedIn profile as well. That's a good industry practice. Keep up to date with the changes on LinkedIn implements. They make changes several times a year. The personal pronouns and the pronunciation of your name are pretty recent updates. The career break uh, feature that we talked about under experience is a pretty recent update. A couple times a year, they'll do those. And you wanna stay up to date on those trends too. I see we have a question from the chat. The question is, what is your opinion on how closely your job descriptions on LinkedIn should match your resume? Is there anything unique you recommend adding? I think the more consistent they are, the better for your brand. We want to be wary of them looking very different because that could be a red flag to a potential employer. Um, but when in doubt, you can always copy and paste those. That's okay. That's okay. That's a good question. Okay. Um, remember, users on LinkedIn can view your activity. Um, they can see that on your profile page. So if you are active in the job search, but not active on LinkedIn, if you haven't logged in in months, they can see that. They can see that. And so that's why a couple of times a month at minimum, you need to log in. You need to review your feed. You need to spend about 30 minutes updating your network, congratulating those that have moved on to other roles and just being in the know. It's good and healthy. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the mobile app. Um, in the in person, I, I know I have the mobile app. I don't have the mobile app or online. I have it or I don't. Okay, two, a couple do. One doesn't. That's okay. Um, in the chat box, I'll be watching for that. The mobile app um, is really good. Most everything that you can do in the desktop version, you can do in the app version. Profile edits are harder to do in the app, and I recommend doing those on the desktop version. I mean, on a computer um, rather than in the app. But for networking in person, being at a conference. This QR code feature, it, it makes it so easy to add someone to your network. I see we have a question. Yeah, please do. The question is, how much weight does a certification from an online source have, like from Coursera, for example? Relative to, it's just kind of open. It's okay, it's okay. Um, so the question in the chat box is, um, how much weight would an online certification have? It, it depends on if it's relevant or recent or not. And so you have to think about your documents as a job seeker, LinkedIn profile, interview, um, your resume through their lens of what's in it for them. What are your um, what are your contributions going to be? And so the more relevant it is to the type of job you're going for, certainly the more valuable it'll be. But that's your responsibility as the job seeker to communicate what those relevant um the pieces are, are of the, for the puzzle. Okay. Um, question in the, in the audience? Yeah, since we're on the mobile app, yeah, um, like data about what percentage of job seekers are using the mobile app versus mm -hmm. desktop? Um, for the online group, the question in the, in the is, do we have data on what percentage of LinkedIn users are using the app versus the desktop version? I'm not aware of any data for that. I imagine LinkedIn does have that. Um, my gut says that that's probably a generational break in a lot of ways um, for folks who are using app-related phone technology and some who, who are not, and that's fine. Um, I found the most success and the most utility out of the mobile app when I'm at a networking event in a conference. There's a function on there called um, Find Nearby, and Caroline and I were at a conference pre-COVID, um, and we were in this big room. Can't wait to be back in these types of settings. Big room, um, 100 plus people in the room. And throughout the week, we'd met a lot of people. We hadn't gotten to like logging them in LinkedIn yet. And they said, okay, you know, for the next couple of minutes, everyone go into LinkedIn, turn your Bluetooth on and use this font nearby feature. And then you can add all the faces that you recognize that you met. And so those, you can add those acquaintance level connections very easily. There is this QR code um, option on there to share your code or just to bring it up on your phone at networking events. 
There are other apps that do very similar. Hi, hello is a good app um, that you can add your LinkedIn profile and other links to other resources, especially if you're in the, the service industry, I'd recommend hi, hello. Um, but technology is our friend. So yeah, definitely use it. Great question. Okay, I wanna share a great resource that LinkedIn provides. And we'll put this into the chat for those that are in person. We'll make sure you get the link. Um, to it, but you can find it with a quick Google LinkedIn job search checklist PDF. And so this PDF is maybe eight pages or so, and it breaks down a lot of the data and the research that they have on why it's important to have a photo on your LinkedIn profile, ways that you can find yourself more searchable, and also information on the job search. So definitely check out that resource um, to supplement the content that we've talked about today. Okay. I think we're at the point where I can open it up to general questions. Oh, sorry, I clicked too much here. And you're most welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn. If there's anyone um, in there, please do customize the note. Say, um, I was in your job club presentation, uh, so I know and I'm more likely to accept you um, if that note's customized. And if there's someone in my network that I can help facilitate an introduction to, I wanna do that so you can be successful. Any questions in the chat? All right, I think we took care of them along the way. Any questions in the room that I can help support? All right, thank you all so much. Very grateful for the time. Thank you, Amanda. That was just amazing. And um, a lot of information, no doubt. So. Let me just, uh, let's conclude her presentation. If, if the viewing audience and, and, and as well as uh, those of you that are online, what is your takeaway from today's program? What did Amanda share with you that, um, that you might use in the next week, two weeks, month? If you would go to the chat box and just maybe tell us that, what, what, what was it you heard that mm, you instantly said this could be helpful? in my job search. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to share that? We have one right here. The rest of you get on that, get in the chat box and let us know, please. I have a lot of reason to get into my uh, LinkedIn now and update it. So I haven't updated for, oh, I don't know, a month and a half or so. And I've been in the job search all the time. So a lot of reason to get back in there and get active in it. All right, we had an audience uh, member say that um, he's currently in the job search, but he hasn't been into his LinkedIn account for the last month and a half or so. So he knows he needs to do that and uh, do some updating and, and make sure that, that, that it's acknowledged. So hopefully you're sharing those in the, in the chat box and we appreciate that. And we know, we know that uh, a lot of information will be utilized from today. So again, thank you, Amanda. We're gonna move on to who's hiring. And that is the, um, the next section. And we're gonna bring up Nicole Waite, uh, and she's gonna let us know immediately what steps at UK is offering. We know that that is a wonderful uh, resource for those of you that are trying to perhaps start a new career or just get your foot in the door at UK. So Nicole, share with us. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Carolyn and Amanda. So we have many positions, of course, open with steps. And just to, I'm not sure if the audience is familiar with steps here at the University of Kentucky, we are temporary employment within the University of Kentucky. Um, and in HR, we're under that career umbrella. We're all in the same department. And so steps is a great way to get your foot in the door. And so, um, and, and basically it, it is what it says. So you uh, apply for these positions. They are temporary positions, but many of the positions have the ability to transition or tr into a full-time regular positions or part-time regular positions. And I do want to stick out that full-time and part-time we do offer full-time. Well, I should say we do have full-time positions available as well as part-time, although they are temporary positions. And so many people use these positions to come in to the university and build up that, build up your LinkedIn profile, build up your resume, uh, get those hands-on skills, networking, which is huge. And so when you're networking, of course, you go onto that LinkedIn profile, you connect with people. Um, and then we always encourage that if the ultimate goal is to score a regular position here at the University of Kentucky, 
interview. We do not mind. That is the goal there. We congratulate people literally when they score uh, these regular jobs that they're looking for here at the university. And so, but it, it does make you more visible because when applying, of course, now you know these systems, now you know our programs. And so as you're applying for these jobs, uh, for, uh, sorry, within the University of Kentucky and using those skills, uh, many people are top, you know, top candidates because it's like, hey, we don't have to train you, you know, all these different things. So um, it is a great, great way. And then as far as the time frame, that differs. And so we, that's not something that we project uh, in our office. Uh, that's something that the supervisors project in their offices when someone actually transitions, but many of our positions. And so I always toot my horn that I'm a success story with steps. I actually started out in steps. Um, yeah, Amanda, she started out with steps. My director, uh, my director's boss who works in HR, I'm, I'm going to say maybe half the people that work in our department started out in steps. So it's a really great way to get your foot in the door here at the university. And we're not limited to the type of jobs that we hire for um, from I don't know, professors, uh, people, tenured, I mean, healthcare, all over and all over Kentucky. So currently, let me get to that. Uh, we actually have some uh, positions open. I should say many admin positions, medical assistant positions. Um, we have, especially, I think one to highlight, which I will share with our um, Job Club Facebook group on LinkedIn. I'm sorry, not Facebook, Job Club LinkedIn uh, page. But there is an admin, <clears throat> executive admin position that's open immediately. And that one is actually for the hospital. Um, but there are many more on campus. Some of the positions are um, that we have are not just in office. Some of them are hybrid, some of them are remote. We know that that's really popular now. So I always encourage you to go online and just really view that for yourself. There are search engines there. Um, my boss, well, actually my director just done a presentation. If you would like to go back and watch that uh, here at Job Club, kind of talking about how to narrow down your search using UK's application system. So you can also do that. Her name's Sarah, um, Sarah Bose. So if you want to look that up, but um, yeah, just please take out time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly, uh, as Amanda mentioned, via LinkedIn, or feel free to email me at UK if you have general questions um, about um, steps or anything in career employment. I'll be sure to uh, point you in the right direction also. So, yeah. And as far as, let me see, one tip I would say, uh, if I had any tips to give about LinkedIn profiles, uh, I think I would just mimic actually what Amanda says is going in and doing some edits and even considering if you're not already when you're applying for a job with a company, considering following them, researching the company um, so that you can have those questions ready when you go in there and, and have some knowledge about the company, you know, make yourself look a little more, you know, <laughs> You know, just make yourself look a little, little more well hearts about what the company is, what you would bring to the company, what you would bring to the team. You know, have that I we factor. You know, have an even balance um, for that. But yeah, that's all I have. But feel free, of course, again to reach out to me if you have any questions. All right, I'll give it back to Diana. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nicole. Well, this is the time to talk about who's hiring. And um, if you are online, employers with active jobs leads, please make. We'll be addressing those in the audience now, but we'd love for you to go to the, to the chat box or raise your hand and we'll let you announce, make that one minute announcement online. So you could do that while we entertain a job um, offering here in our building. Hello, uh, I'm Officer Rachel Kennedy. I'm the recruiting coordinator with the Lexington Police Department, and uh, we are currently hiring for the position of police recruit um, for people who want to come to our police training academy here in Lexington. We will be accepting online applications uh, through July 25th, and uh, that application is at joinlexpd.com. Um, we recently increased our starting salary pretty significantly. We have excellent benefits and um, obviously, we're in the field of public safety and law enforcement. So um, our new recruiting slogan is set the standard. And that is our goal here at the Lexington Police Department to look for folks who um, want to come in and set the standard high for community policing here in Lexington. Thank you so much. So we will include that in our email um, messaging and listing that goes um, to our participants later this afternoon. So this is the Lexington Police. 
department and they are recruiting as we speak. Do we have any uh, online that want to speak? Okay. So now we'll hear from our facilitators in Job Club and we'll begin with Cooperative Extension. Um, the screen is showing you Fayette County Cooperative Extension, but I wanna remind you that you have an extension office in each and every 120 counties. So I invite you to go to their websites, go to their office, and you will find a wealth of information, resources, and programs. Um, I know here in Fayette County, they have all kinds of, of, of programming. There's information in their foyer here with uh, um, gardening and sewing and nutrition and cooking and financial. It, there is a whole ar uh, array of, of information and, and pro programs. So please do that. Um, we love Extension and we know that it's there to help our general public and we appreciate them. Now we'll hear from our human resource updates from UK Steps, which we have just done from Nicole Waite. So we'll skip that slide and we appreciate and again remind you that you will want to uh, visit that if you're looking to be employed by UK. Alumni Career Services, you see on your slide there um, where to go from help. And we have so much to offer in this particular area in our, your career search. So there is your uh, web, website at the bottom, www.ukalumni.net slash career. And there's a resume cover letter um, information, job search strategies, uh, career transition. They're there to help you. So utilize, be sure, and check out that website. Next time at Job Club, and we're really excited. We always are. Um, just every topic is relevant. Every topic, topic is important. So on June the 28th, resume is the essential document. We haven't hit on that for a while, but um, certainly Ray Clear, he is the director of the Stuckard Career Center at UK. And um, just a little bit about that information uh, on this program, there's sweeping changes in the workplace, including the strategies and approaches that employers utilize to attract and retain talent. Amidst this environment, the resume has proven to be the surprisingly durable exception to the new rules of the game. We've talked about LinkedIn today. Uh, that's certainly a new, new phase of, of employment but the resume has endured, it's still there. So we want you to come learn about content, formatting, strategy, and other important considerations to help inform your resume development. So there is registration information <laughs> on the slide. We have a QR um, um, opportunity for you to, to also take action. And we just look forward to you being here on June the 28th. I want to remind everyone that you, those that are registered online, you will receive an email later this afternoon, and we will be including job leads that we have received up to this point. And uh, if not, check out our LinkedIn community. Um, we will also be posting job leads in the, in the next two weeks before we meet again. Thanks so much for being here. It's time for networking while we're here in person, and we look forward to seeing everyone on June the 28th. Thanks, and have a great day.